If you want a higher chance of your YouTube channel blowing up, it's crucial that you stand out from the crowd. This can be extremely stressful, but don't worry, I'm gonna show you three creative ways to make your video so much more interesting. First, you need to make sure that you have an interesting video intro. To do that, you can use visual effects like putting yourself into an old television screen. All you need to do is find a clip of a TV. You can find it anywhere. It doesn't matter what's displayed on the screen, because we're gonna replace it. Now, to do that, drag the video of yourself on top of the television. Then make sure the clip is selected and go to the effect controls. Select the motion properties and in the program monitor adjust the scale and position so that your video almost fits inside the TV. Next, we're gonna create a mask on your video, but we can't because we don't know where the edges of the television are. To fix that, go to the timeline and simply hide the video track with your clip on. Make sure your video stays selected and go back to the effect controls. In opacity, click the pen tool to create a mask. Then draw an extremely precise mask around the edge of the screen. The better this mask, the more realistic it will look. You can now make the video track visible again and there you are. If needed, play around with the mask expansion and feather to smoothen out the selection. Now, an old TV is usually a little bit etched and to recreate that effect, find lens distortion in the effects library and drag it on your video. In the effect controls, increase the curvature just a little bit. This will make it curve, of course, but it will also add these wide borders. To fix that, we're gonna scale up the clip. Unfortunately, we can't use the normal motion properties because that will scale up the clip as well. Now, we can bypass that by finding the transform effect and dragging it underneath the lens distortion. Now, you can scale it up as much as you want because it's applied on top of the mask. Looks awesome, but now we're gonna make it look older. To do that, go to Window on top and find Lumetri Color Panel. Once it's open, increase the exposure a lot. This will make it look older instantly. Now, old screens aren't that good in producing colors. So to recreate that old effect, we're gonna decrease the saturation a little. That already looks a lot better. Next, go to the Creative tab and find Sharpen. Of course, we don't want it to be sharper, so let's turn it down. This will make it look a little unsharp. Increasing the Faded Film slider will make it look more flat, so you can play with that as well. Next, find a static overlay video and drag it on top of your clips. Head over to the Effect Controls and find the Blending Modes. Choose Screen or Add to make it transparent. Now in the timeline, select a clip of your video. Then simply go to the mask we created earlier and select it. Press Ctrl plus C on your keyboard to copy it. Then go back to the timeline and select the static video. Now head back to the effect controls and select the opacity property. Now simply press Ctrl plus V to paste the mask on your clip. And there you go, the video will now fit in your screen perfectly. Now to put the cherry on top, we're gonna make the screen glow. To do that, move the static TV clip one track up. Then hold on Alt and duplicate your video. We're gonna use Gaussian Blur to make it glow, but before we do that, we need to right click the clip and nest it. If we don't, the blur will be applied to the inside of the mask only, which will make it unvisible. Now head over to the effects library and find Gaussian Blur, then drag it on the nested sequence. Now go to the effect controls and increase the blurriness. If you want, you can always play with the opacity to change the brightness of the glow. That looks absolutely stunning. Alright, secret number two is gonna help you blow up your channel so hard. Using recognizable music in your videos. For example, Bruno Mars. I just can't stress it enough how well this actually works in keeping the audience interested and engaged. By using mainstream music, you will make the audience feel like they're at home. Also, the YouTube algorithm will love this, so this will result in much more views. But won't I lose monetization if I use Coldplay in my videos? Absolutely not. Licked, the sponsor of today's video, will take care of that. Licked can hook you up with a wide range of over a million mainstream tracks and over 100,000 stock tracks, while being protected from copyright strikes and demonetization. By using mainstream music, you will connect with your audience on a much deeper level. Not only are you satisfying them visually, the mainstream music makes your content extremely enjoyable as well. You can even use Louis Capaldi, James Young, Nicki Minaj, and so much more. Because of Licked's huge catalog, us content creators and filmmakers can finally find that tailored piece of music that we need. It's just mind-blowing how much using mainstream tracks will help enhance your content. So, guys, please don't miss out on this and sign up by using the link down below. You will receive an incredible discount, including 14 days of free stock music and a massive 50% off your first mainstream track. So, if you're curious about Licked and how it can change your content creation, check out the link in the description and redeem your discount. Now let's see what else will make your YouTube channel blow up. Using a fun effect like cloning yourself in a dialogue. People watching your content will always wonder, how did he do that? Well, it's actually extremely extremely simple. First, make a video of yourself somewhere random. For example, sitting at a table. You can pretend you're talking to someone sitting in front of you. Then switch positions.
positions and again, act like you're listening and talking to the person in front of you. When you're done, put both the clips in Premiere. Now drag the second clip on top of the first one. Next go to the effect library and find the crop effect. Then drag it onto the second clip. Make sure it's selected and head over to the effect controls. In here, select the crop effect. In the program monitor, drag the left property to somewhere in the middle so that both versions of you are visible. Now if you see a line appear in the middle, you can simply increase the edge feather. That will fix it. Now we have a basic cloning effect, but it would be so much cooler if we could actually see the cloning process. To do that, move the second clip one track up and hide the video track so that we can only see the first one. Now hold on Alt and duplicate the first clip in between them. Move the playhead to the moment you want the cloning to start. Then trim the clip to your playhead. Now to create this morphing effect, we need to create a mask around you. To do that, make sure the clip is selected and go to the effect controls. Find opacity and click on the pen tool to create a mask. In the program monitor, drag a mask around yourself carefully. It doesn't have to be extremely precise, just keep it clean. Now once that's done, go back to the timeline and right click your clip. Choose nest. We're doing this because otherwise the morph effect will be applied to the inside of the mask we just created. Once your video is nested, go to the effects library and find the transform effect. Drag it on the nested sequence. Now head over to the effect controls and set a position keyframe. Grab the playhead and move around 8 frames further in time. Now adjust the position to the right side. The masked out version of yourself will now move to the right. Alright, this animation is way too static. So to make it smoother, expand the velocity curves and pull the lever of the first keyframe. That way the animation will start slowly and go faster. Also, we need a lot of motion blur. To create that, increase the shutter angle to 360 degrees. Alright guys, we're getting there. Now we're gonna transfer into your clone. To do that, make the top clip visible again. Then move the playhead to the moment where the cloning process has just started. Exactly where you can see the motion blur. Then trim the top clip against the playhead. Now we can see this line from the crop effect earlier. To get rid of it, select your clone and go to the effect controls. Click the pen tool again and in the program monitor, create a mask around yourself, just like we did before. Then back in the timeline, right click the clip and put it inside a nested sequence. We're doing this for the same reason as before. Now go to the effects library and find the transform effect again. Drag it on the nested sequence. Now with that clip selected, go to the effect controls. Move the playhead 8 frames from the start of the clip and then set a position keyframe. Then move the playhead back to the beginning of the clip and set the position all the way to the left side. Now expand the velocity curves and pull the lever of the second keyframe so that the movement ends slowly. Of course, increase the motion blur to 360 degrees and there you go. You can already see where we're going with this. The only issue now is this mess right here. To fix that, move the playhead to the middle of the cloning motion and trim the middle clip until it snaps against the playhead. And now it looks like your clone is getting sucked out of you. Now there's one more thing we need to fix and that is this mask. To do that, go to the moment where the cloning is done and remove everything on the right side of your clip. Then double click to open up the nested sequence. Select your clip and hit Ctrl plus C on your keyboard to copy it. Now go back to your normal sequence and hit Ctrl plus V. Trim away the part of the nested sequence. And there you go, you've now cloned yourself successfully and you're ready to mind blow your audience. Now to go viral even more, you should definitely learn the fire bending effect from Avatar in the video right here on my left. Thank you guys so much for watching, stay creative.